What's up everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we talk about Twitch making another bad move, the Embracer Group acquisition, and much more. First off, we have Call of Duty teasing the upcoming entry to the series Modern Warfare 2. They posted on their Twitter account saying the new era of Call of Duty is coming, with a short video of the logo. Some eagle-eyed fans spotted coordinates in the video which appear to point to Singapore, which could be a location we visit in the game's campaign and multiplayer. It also appears that a brief flash of the Task Force 141 logo made its way into the teaser, so we can expect at least an early iteration of the team to show up in this new title. The Battlefield 2042 rumor mill has started up again, this time speculating on the game coming to Game Pass. It was spotted on the Microsoft Store along with FIFA 22, with the option included with EA Play rather than the current free trial with EA Play, which I feel is very specific wording. Now it looks to have removed the included option, but to be honest, even now with the most recent update, I doubt new players will come into the fray just to experience a fundamentally busted game. Maybe once some more substantial patches come out and the current player base starts saying it's good, then maybe it'll have a chance. If you're just as bummed out about Battlefield 2042 as I am and need some recommendations on similar games that aren't completely busted, check out the iCard in the top right for a video where I do just that for 5 games you might want to check out. Xbox has recently announced that they will have a showcase with Bethesda coming up in June. We still have a lot of time before that happens, but the rumors and wish lists have already started. While I don't really know what to expect outside of just Bethesda titles, I do hope we get some new information on Starfield. Like, what it is. The last time we got anything related to it was just a pre-rendered cinematic which did look cool, but told us absolutely nothing about the game. Outside of that, I have no idea what to expect. So mark your calendars for June 12th and cross your fingers that we get some good news. On to the big one. Twitch is in the news again because leaked information about possible plans on increasing revenue have surfaced. According to a Bloomberg article, the leak came from those familiar with the planning saying that the top streamers may be seeing a cut in the revenue from subscriptions from a 70-30 split to an even 50-50. There wasn't mention on how this would affect affiliates, though I'm thinking this will trickle down to affiliates as well, potentially bringing it down to a 30-70 split, though that is complete conjecture on my part. The Bloomberg article doesn't mention this. This is just me thinking out loud. There's also talk of adding some sort of tier list for subscription revenue split with clear thresholds to hit to qualify for each tier. That, so far, is a bunch of bullshit. But it doesn't stop there because Twitch also thinks it's a good idea to interview with the viewing experience of all the viewers on the platform. You already know what's coming. More ads. Twitch is attempting to incentivize streamers who stream more than 40 hours a month by offering $100 for running 2 minutes of ads every hour. At least, they could be earning that. It would scale with ad minutes watched, supposedly. While this could appear to be a more lucrative revenue share model for streamers, this can also hurt the platform. However, all of this comes with the idea that these changes would release partners from the exclusivity clause found under the partner agreement. If you're not aware, partners and affiliates are not able to stream anywhere else besides Twitch. And if I recall correctly, any content from that stream, be it a VOD or a clip, cannot be posted anywhere for at least 24 hours after the original stream ended. While it's great to hear that partners would get released from the exclusivity, they only specifically mention partners. So affiliates are assumed to still be locked into that exclusivity. On top of that, partners would be trading in a lock just for that exclusivity to go away. We've already seen an exodus from Twitch with streamers like Valkyrie, Courage, Dr. Lupo, Tim the Tapman, among many others, making the switch to YouTube gaming as their platform to stream on. We even saw Saikuno leave Twitch for YouTube recently. The more streamers leave, their fan base will mostly follow, and without viewers buying subs and watching ads, which is a big part of their model here, the platform makes even less money. To add insult to injury, Lester Chen, the global head of gaming creators at YouTube, what a title, tweeted this out saying, lots coming at YouTube Gaming in the next two weeks. Also PSA, YouTube's rev share across fan funding features like Super Chats, memberships, remains 70-30. And our YouTube partner program doesn't require any form of content exclusivity. Of course, there was a lot of backlash from the online gaming and content creation communities regarding this Twitch leak. We even had some top streamers on Twitch, the very platform these changes are being discussed at, as well as YouTubers chiming in, criticizing Twitch for these possible moves. Here are a few quick clips from other creators sharing their thoughts on the matter. I, I think obviously this is something that's not good for streamers. This is something that's not good for viewers. This is something that's only good for Twitch. 
And I've always said this is that whenever you have a uh, like a, a business or something like this and their goals deviate from filling the need that the consumer has on a very simple level, filling the need the consumer has, the moment that you deviate from that is the moment that you completely lose the plot. All right, let's this is incognito tab. Let's just boot up XQC stream. I want my Overwatch 2 drops. Unskippable 30 second ad. That's a crazy thing. Especially because most people um, who watch on, on, on desktop or you like to bounce around. You know, you, you, you're like, okay, what's XQC doing? Overwatch? Well, okay, I'm going to switch over to Mizkiv. And they give you another ad! Even Pokimane chimed in on her Iman account saying, In my opinion, Twitch should just implement ads that don't directly interfere with the stream. Sidebar, picture in picture, underlay, etc. I understand advertisers are essential to make a platform profitable, but intervening with the viewer's experience is not how they should go about it. So now with all of this said, these changes are still up in the air and can be called off at any time. However, some of these changes could be implemented as soon as summer rolls around. I still feel like it's a terrible move for both creators and viewers alike. More ads means more missable moments for the viewer, and the revenue split for partners going down will definitely hurt. This is going to be prime time to abandon ship if these changes actually go through. Speaking of moving to YouTube, I mentioned this earlier, but Saikuno recently made the switch to YouTube gaming. I'm not sure if there was a contract involved or not, but from what I've heard from other creators that have spoken publicly about switching to YouTube, it allows for a bit more freedom as far as streaming hours go. After his switch, Dr. Lupo said that it allows for more family time, echoing the same sentiment as Tim the Tatman after his switch. However, this usually results in an initial hit in revenue, depending on if you have a contract or not. Harris Heller, who creates streaming-related content here on YouTube, said as much when he made the switch. Harris didn't have a contract, so he lost anywhere in the vicinity of $100,000 to $150,000, and I believe that was per month just based on gifted subs and the like. While I don't think this would affect Saikuno all that much, this does affect those without a contract, like Harris Heller. Speaking of Harris Heller, Harris Heller was live on YouTube Tuesday night and tested out YouTube's newest feature, Raids. Though on YouTube, they're known as live redirects. I know Twitch users are familiar with raids, but for the uninitiated, a raid is when a streamer ends their stream by sending their viewers to another channel on the same platform they're on, usually a show of support for the recipient. YouTube has been in dire need of a lot of features, but if you recall that tweet from Lester, the global head of gaming creators, still, what a title, it was mentioned that a lot was coming to YouTube gaming in the coming weeks, and this feature seems to be one of them. I tuned into the stream to see how it worked, and if there were any bugs with it. As a new feature, of course, there were a few hiccups. Ups. Here's a quick series of clips of Harris figuring it out, as I'm sure a lot of YouTube streamers are going to run into this. I'm live. All right. Just went live. Just went live on the other one. All right. We are live on both channels right now. I don't know how well my internet is handling this. So now that I'm live on the other one, can I... Is it in customiza customization? Okay. Is that gonna work? Do I have to type in the URL? You have to whitelist yourself? No, I have it set to where, uh, I have it set to where anyone I'm subscribed to. I set this earlier, I set this earlier. Anyone I'm subscribed to, in fact, you can see it, I'm gonna show you on my other channel. Oh, I also added Saikuno as an experiment because hopefully Saikuno raids me one day. Allow live redirects from channels I subscribe to. I'm definitely subscribed to the Alpha Gaming channel. All right, let's let's refresh this screen here. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it over here. I'm gonna try it on a different computer. It's not working here either. <laughs> YouTube, you're typing in the channel URL. Are you saying the the URL of the stream? So you're saying type in this URL the here. Stream. That stream isn't looking the best. Oh, <gasps> it said saved that time. Okay, now we end this stream and it should shoot you all out over there. Are we ready to try it? The moment of truth? Guys, it's been an honor. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the other side. Hey, look at that. Hey, it's working! For me, it worked like a charm, though it appears some viewers didn't get sent over successfully. In addition to that, it seems the steps required in order to achieve a successful raid are a little convoluted to break it down into two main points. The recipient streamer must allow raids 
or live redirects from the streamer who wants to rate them. And you must specifically use the URL of the live stream itself, not the YouTube channel, the live stream when prompted for where you want to redirect your audience to. Plus the spot where you initiate the raid is in a weird place at the bottom of the page as a small hyperlink rather than a button or on its own tab. New users attempting to use this tool may have a bit of a weird time with this on the first few go arounds, but as things get fine tuned, I'm sure this feature will take off. I'm excited to see this feature start getting used regularly as I'm sure this along with other features on the way will solidify YouTube as a place to live stream. Before we head into our final story for the video, what are your thoughts on what we discussed so far? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. And while you're there, consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons as that always helps me out. Now on to our final story. Embracer Group has recently acquired a few studios under the Square Enix umbrella, Eidos, Crystal Dynamics, and Square Enix Montreal, along with the IPs that they develop. This means they now have Deus Ex, Tomb Raider, and wait for it, Legacy of Cain, baby and Gex too, I guess. This acquisition was done to the tune of $300 million. Compared to the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard for almost 70 billion and Sony's acquisition of Bungie for 3.6 billion, this Embracer deal seems like daylight robbery. While the future of these studios and their IPs still seem a little unclear, I personally think this is better for them in the long term. To put it in perspective, Embracer already owns a number of studios like Gearbox Software, THQ Nordic, Saber Interactive, Cook Media, Deep Silver, and Coffee Stain Studios. So I feel like the new studios joining the Embracer roster will be taken care of and possibly have a chance to revive titles like Legacy of Kane, which fans have been wanting for a very long time. However, there's a caveat on the Square Enix side of things. As soon as this deal was made public, Square Enix said the sale of its studios and IPs will establish a more efficient allocation of resources and enable the launch of a new business by moving forward with investments in fields including blockchain, AI, and the cloud. Which is to say, Square Enix are going all in on their NFT bullshit. Some developers under Square Enix have already voiced their concern over NFTs making their way into games. Renowned Final Fantasy XIV director Yoshi P had gone on record saying that there would be no NFTs being added to Final Fantasy XIV when discussing the popularity of NFTs in the metaverse in an online interview. However, the IP is owned by Square Enix, so it's very much possible that the suits could force NFTs into their games, including Final Fantasy XIV. The timing of this could spell disaster for Square Enix in terms of NFTs. Good news for the rest of us as Kotaku cites a Wall Street Journal report saying that there is a collapse in the NFT market, dropping 92% since last September. Additionally, there was a drop in active wallets at 88%, meaning less and less people are interested in NFTs. Sure, you'll still have a vocal portion of the NFT community saying it's the future, Web3, blockchain, blah blah, you get it. So rest easy, my friends. If the other suits at Square Enix see little business success in the short or long term, I doubt the support will be there to include NFTs in Square Enix titles. Coming back around to Embracer, the acquisition does seem favorable to fans of the studios they acquired. What titles are you hoping to get more games of? Personally, I'm looking forward to seeing the new Tomb Raider Crystal Dynamics is working on and on Unreal Engine 5. Legacy of Kane is another popular IP I'd like to see get a revival as I think fans would love to see it. Plus, it'll establish a lot of good faith in Embracer. We'll just have to see what happens next. And that's about all I had for this one. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for something else to watch, consider checking out the videos on screen. If you like what you saw, hit those like and subscribe buttons as that always helps me out. If you're looking for sources that I used in this video, check out the description. You'll also find my uh, social media links down there, including my Twitter and Twitch. <laughs> With that being said, stay hydrated. I hope you have a good one and I'll catch you next time.